Reviews.com over here at the Gronger Digital Plaza in Taipei. And guess what we just scored? That's the new Asus EPET Memo, a 7-inch tablet. That's actually the Asian version that comes with a Qualcomm Snapdragon SOC in there. We're taking it to our office. We're going to unbox it right now. So come and join us. So here we are, back to our office, and that's the new Asus EPAD Memo. Well, it's not so new anymore. I think the first time we saw it, that was like at Computex last year. Uh, Computex in June 2011. So finally, we got one. This is actually the Asus EPAD Memo uh, ME171. That means that's not the Tegra version. The Tegra version is called 370T, Tegra 3 version. This is the one with the Snapdragon S3. That means it comes uh, with the MSM8260. That's a 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor. And it also supports the Adreno 220 GPU. And uh, it costs around 18,000 NTs, which is uh, almost 600 US dollars, 599. No, it's uh, 680 now with the exchange. It's 680 now, so the dollar the, the yeah. dollar dropped a little so, bit. 580, 580. 580, there 80, you go. Um, well, anyways, uh, we got one, and we're about to unbox it and give you a very first impression of it. Because uh, finally, I think uh, we're the first ones to get a, a real retail version. Well, you never know. I think there were also some reviews in Singapore or something. But uh, we've been just spotting this. Uh, as you can see, 7-inch device, but we're going to take a look at this one later. Um, it's a nice pair of headphones here and here's a micro usb to usb to recharge your device we have a couple of different power outlets so these became so standard these looks like the one from acer and the one from samsung so i'm glad to see that because we can also use it for other devices and as you can see we have this version with the um it's called i think mimic mimic Mimic. Uh, it's a little handset uh, with a transparent OLED display and you can make uh, phone calls with it. Okay, let's take a look at this some later and especially how it works. So, uh, first of all, it's all about this device here. I'm actually really looking forward to get one. And uh, Nicole and me just got over to the Guangha Digital Plaza and actually that was the first device that we saw. Um, we wanted to hunt down some new uh, PlayStation Vita games, but instead of uh, having some Vita games, it's now all about the new tablet here. And um, yeah, let's get rid of this. And let's place it here so I can do a fake unboxing in German afterwards. <laughs> And um, let's talk about this device. 389 grams, um, it's 11.6 millimeter thick. Uh, I love the back of it. It, it, it. This feels like the Asus EPET slider. It's a kind of um, yeah, rubber, hard rubber uh, um, finish here. Um, I think that's a 5 megapixel camera on the back and a 1.3 megapixel camera on the front. Uh, on the bottom we have our, our micro USB, a mini HDMI out, and a, a jack for your headset. Over here we have, oh, here we go, the stylus, very fancy. Um, a rocker for the volume. This should be a little reset button. Um, the power button. No clue what this is. Oh, maybe this is for uh, a micro SD card. Yeah, and the other one's uh, that, that's that's the same one. Exactly. So we have a 3G version, and um, it's a seven-inch display. 1280 by 800 is the resolution, and actually this is um, a Super IPS Plus display. That means uh, it's the same display technology that they're also using for the Asus EPET Transformer Prime. So especially when you're outdoors. Uh, it offers you some additional brightness and that really makes a difference. So um, what about switching it on? Because you will also notice that we got um, the ice cream sandwich version. Um, we saw it during, I think it was CES, there was a Honeycomb 3.2 version available. Um, there are a couple of previews on the, on the web that are talking about the Honeycomb version. So, but this is um, the Android ice cream sandwich one. And the one that we saw at uh, CES, we weren't allowed to film the back because they hadn't finished the back of it yet. Well, they definitely finished the back right now, as you yeah. can see. Yeah, it was a, it was a non kind of uh, not non shiny, or it was it was a little bit shiny, and then some parts were like a little matte. No, 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 this it was, it was this feels really good. Like, yeah. This is this is really nice right now. 
And yeah, it has one gigabyte of RAM and uh, 60 gigabyte of flash memory. So, um, oops, only 9% of battery life left. But um, you can immediately tell this is this typical ASUS uh, EPAD transformer background wallpaper. And um, let's see how the. Oh, that's a new widget here. Buddy Bus, whatever that is. It looks to me like any kind of social network. Well, that's what it says, right? It's a social network service. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you can log in with all the different social network accounts. But uh, let's take a quick look at the version of Ice Cream Sandwich on here so that we know what we're dealing with. Here we go. And actually, it's not Ice Cream Sandwich. Well, no. it, it, it said Ice Cream Sandwich on, uh, on the package. So this is one uh, when it's running uh, Android Honeycomb 3.2.1. I was already wondering because it feels a little bit sluggish already on the desktop. Anyway, so uh, a little bit good. Mandarin uh, experiences. Uh, I've definitely thought that this would be running on Ice Cream Sandwich, like this little magazine told us, but I guess that, that just says it's getting upgraded to Ice Cream Sandwich very, very soon. Well, the guy at the shop said Ice Cream Sandwich. Uh, he did. He did. The guy at the shop said Screw him. him. Anyways, the stupid <laughs> German couldn't read it, so there you go. We just bought the one uh, with, um, with Honeycomb on here, but that doesn't matter. Um, what I would love to check out is, how does this work here? Okay, you, you even have to recharge it, I guess. Mm -hmm. There's a volume control on here. And um, where is the power button? Let's see if I... Hmm. It probably needs recharging like the tablet. Okay, anyways. What we're going to do right now is we're going to recharge um, the Mamic. We're going to recharge... Um, the uh, memo ME171 and then we're going to be back for a detailed walkthrough. So just to give you an idea of the size of the new ASUS EPAD memo ME171, we have a bunch of other tablets over here that are in the 7-inch category over here. It's the very first Samsung Galaxy tab and then we have um, the Kindle Fire Blackberry Playbook, that's the Motorola Zoom 2 Media Edition, the 8.2 inch, that's the Nuke tablet, another 7 inch, and it's a Samsung Galaxy Tab 7.7, which obviously sports a 7.7 .7 inch display. So, uh, in terms of thickness, I think uh, it's almost, well, not only almost, it's very, very close to the first generation of the uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab. It's a little bit smaller, as you can see. No, no, it's almost the same. Yeah. Let's just maybe stack them up here, as you can see. No, it's, it's definitely a little bit longer, right? Hmm. And it uh, should be the same with the Kindle Fire. There you go. Let's see. It's slightly thinner, and it's definitely a little bit uh, yeah, the Memo is definitely a little bit heavier. And that should be the same with the Blackberry Playbook. Almost the same size. Okay, and then uh, what about the new tablet? Well, the new tablet is huge compared to the Memo. And over here, the Motorola Zoom Media Edition 2. And of course, that's... Uh, the display is 1.2 inch bigger and last but not least um, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7.7 .7, my favorite right now and as you can see the 7.7 .7 is uh, super thin compared to the ePad memo so that was a little overview of how big the ASUS ePad memo ME171 is um, let's head over to the walkthrough okay here we go the EPET Memo ME117. Jesus, it's kind of hard to remember that name. Whoever comes up with such product names, whatever. Um, let me show you a little bit about the pre installed apps on here. Um, you might notice immediately that there's another little button over here on the bottom, and uh, this basically takes a screenshot and then you can use it to just leave notes on there and when you're just clicking on here you can 
use like different pencils and uh, let's do this and different colors and different sizes and all of this. Here's a spray can. There you go. I mean, you're getting it. And what you can do is you can easily share them over your social networks or post it to your Facebook or save it or email it, you know, whatever. But let's just close it. No, I don't want to save it. Besides that, uh, we also have um, the My Painter, which is a little paint program that also offers you a couple of templates. So, for example, let's use this little Christmas card and it's perfect in the middle of April. And let's get a little picture in here and uh, from the gallery. So, I've connected my Google Plus account to it and, of course, uh, you know I'm German. I need to have the Hofmeister on there. Here we go. Let's do this. Okay, hold on. Perfect. Let's use this one. Get it into a Christmas card. No, that's cool, isn't it? And just to give it a little personal twist, um, how about putting a huge smiley on there? Wow, I'm so creative in these days. <laughs> Anyways, uh, and of course, once more, you can save it, you can share it over your social networks, right? So it's just a nice way to play around with this little stylus over here. No, I don't want to save the half. Oops, let me just switch it off. Um, then we also have Supernode. This is a note-taking application that we all know from uh, from the Epic Transform Prime. Um, okay, let's just quickly enter it. Also, it offers you different templates, and then you can uh, just uh, doodle around here and be very innovative not <laughs> you can also use the virtual keyword share it over the networks again save it print it whatever uh, we also have buddy bus buddy buses are yeah like a kind of little tool or aggregating tool for your social networks um, you can set up a, a twitter a facebook and a plug account plug is the Taiwanese Twitter and actually they're just uh, sitting next door over here um, so if you want to try out Plurk go to Plurk.com and then you have a Twitter version in Chinese if you're looking for something like that um, Buddy Bus by the way also comes with a widget and there you go there you see this kind of sluggish uh, performance of our Android Honeycomb 3.2.1 on this and uh, yeah that's how it looks like um, maybe want to go back and uh, open my news updates and then you can see that it's kind of aggregating Twitter and more Twitter but there should also be some, there's Facebook look at this here's the Verge so and of course you can also do status updates and you can reply and whatnot. I'm not sure if I really need that, but it looks kind of nice. We also have MyNet and My Library and My Cloud from ASUS, and uh, plus it also comes with the ASUS Web Storage. I think that's like, uh, there we go, Web Storage 25 gigabytes. And it also comes with ASUS Vibe, which offers you local content like videos, music, and whatnot. Yes, I agree. Let's take a quick look at this. <laughs> there you go, you have Opeo Free Music, which is really nice. It offers you a different radio station that you can search for for your favorite artists. I'm sure that you guys are all familiar with all these artists. Let's just uh, pick one and uh, let's listen to it. So at least we can also get an idea of uh, the speakers. Dum -de -dum -de -dum -de -dum -de -dum. It takes a little bit. Here we go. Is it loading? Is it buffering? It's buffering. Come on. 
Let us hear something. Well, just believe me, um, there should be some music, but obviously that's not really working out right now because of maybe because of the network here. Uh, I'm still showing up over here in the notification bar. Um, but that's it pretty much in terms of what pre-installing uh, applications you're getting here. But what I would like to show you is definitely the performance of um, the Snapdragon S3 platform. Um, therefore, we summed a couple of benchmarks a little bit earlier. So we had an Alinomark benchmark and there you can see that the last one was 34. Oh, that's better. Oh, Mr. Autofocus kick in. Here we go. Just believe me, 34.5 frames per second. Let's go back. We have been also running the Nenomark 2. Uh, here we go. That's even less. Here we go. 24 frames per second. And then we've been running Quadrant. And that one came in at... Um, 1800 1800 something it doesn't show the last benchmark does it well just trust me it was 1800 something so this is on the same level as um, a Tegra 2 EPA transformer TF 101 and then we have Antutu come on open it and Antutu came in at 4,377. Just to let you know how that looks like compared to an EPET Transformer Prime, for example. Here's the ranking. We go into bar chart. Maybe. Here we go. That's the Prime. And here is this device. Right, so the Prime is about two, two and a half times faster. Uh, we've had the Lamo, which uh, is about 975 uh, points. Uh, to give you an idea, Tegra 3 is about um, 1200, 1300 points. And last but not least, I guess, uh, we should check out the Sun Spider benchmark. And that's why I'm opening this one right now. And here we go. There's a Sun Spider benchmark. And that was the one I've been running earlier 2546.5 milliseconds. Um, that also leads us to a little browser test in terms of um, rendering. Let's go to um, the Google News page. Here we go. Okay, let's wait until the site is fully loaded. Here we go, that's about it. Um, pinch to zoom. That's running pretty quick. Oh, here we go. Now it's definitely fully loaded. Let's try the pinch to zoom again. Mm -hmm. Come on. That was working way better on the German video, I tell you that. So I'm not faking this here. Um, it's okay. What about this accelerometer? That's not too bad at all. So yeah, what can we make out of this? I tell you one thing, I kind of like the concept. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we need to bring it back to the shop because our little uh, Mimic, this additional handset isn't working at all, and I would love to show you this transparent OLED display. Um, I love the concept of the, this device. It's more like a huge Galaxy Note, right? Uh, what I just don't like is the performance of the Snapdragon S3 platform with Honeycomb. It might be way better with Ice Cream Sandwich, but I can't tell you right now. Uh, it feels sluggish and uh, this device is quite expensive. This is almost 600 US dollars, right? Uh, this is the same price as the Galaxy Note. And I would definitely prefer to get a Note because it's also way more mobile with this 5.3 inch one. This is a 7 inch one. And it's pretty thick. It's 390 grams, so it's pretty heavy. Um, I really like the concept of it. 
back in June last year, but they should have had released this back in June 2011. Now it's April 2012. There's a whole new generation of SOCs available. That means Snapdragon S4 or Tegra 3 or the upcoming new Exynos from, from Samsung or TI OMIP 5, you know, IMX 6 from FreeScale. I could go on like this for half an hour. Well, maybe not, but you're getting it. All right, so um, I've been kind of hoping to see the Tegra 3 version of it with these features, with this additional handset. Um, I definitely need to do some more testing. I'm hoping to get the ice cream sandwich update ASAP, um, but right now, I'm sorry, Asus. You know that I really like you, and I think you're building very, very innovative platforms, and this is a very innovative platform too, but a Snapdragon S3 is just killing it right now, in my opinion. Still great build quality and uh, some really cool features, but it needs to have a little bit more performance. That's my first impression of the new Asus EPET uh, Memo ME171. 117. Oh gosh, I'm mixing it up all the time. Yeah, whatever. Leave me a comment if you like it. Subscribe to our videos over here. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I'm Sasha for NetbookNews.com. Thanks for watching.